All the way my Savior leads me Cheers each winding path I tread Gives me grace for every trial Feeds me with the living bread Good morning everybody, Chester ARP Church Devotional Podcast Thank you so much for joining us. We have skipped ahead in the book of 1 Kings today to 1 Kings chapter 4, beginning in verse 20. The first part of 1 Kings chapter 4 has to do with a bunch of people who are Solomon's officials. And then there is a story or a portion of 1 Kings chapter 4 that explains the reality of the wealth and the wisdom and the provision that God had given to Israel and really sets the the setting and gives us the circumstances for Solomon's reign and the blessing that Solomon and the people of God enjoyed during his reign. And so we pick this up here in verse 20 of 1 Kings chapter 4. Judah and Israel were as many as the sand by the sea. They ate and drank and were happy. Solomon ruled over all the kingdoms of the Euphrates to the land of the Philistines to the border of Egypt. They brought tribute and served Solomon all the days of his life. Solomon's provision for one day was 30 cores of fine flour and 60 cores of meal, 10 fat oxen and 20 pasture-fed cattle, 100 sheep besides deer, gazelles, roebucks, and fattened fowl. For he had dominion over all the regions of the Euphrates from Tifsa to Gaza and over all the kings west of the Euphrates. And he had peace on all sides around him. And Judah and Israel lived in safety from Dan to even to Beersheba, every man under his vine and under his fig tree all the days of Solomon. Solomon also had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. And those officers supplied provisions for King Solomon and for all who came to King Solomon's table, each one in his own month. They let nothing be lacking. Barley also and straw for the horses and swift steeds they brought to the place where it was required, each according to his duty. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding beyond measure and breadth of mind like the sand on the seashore, so that Solomon's wisdom surpassed the wisdom of the people of the east and the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all the other men, wiser than Ethan the Israelite, and Heman, and Chalcol, and Darda, the sons of Mahol. And his fame was in all the surrounding nations. He spoke of 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. He spoke of trees from the cedar that is in Lebanon to the hyssop that grows out of the wall. He spoke also of beasts and of birds and of reptiles and of fish. And people of all nations came to hear the wisdom of Solomon and from all the kings of the earth who had heard of his wisdom. Solomon's reign was one that was to be recorded in the history of God's people and perhaps even the history of the world as one of the most glorious reigns ever known to human history. Uh, he had more provision than he could imagine. He had more wisdom. He had peace in his kingdom that extended with all the nations that surrounded him. Everyone paid tribute to Solomon. People came from far off to hear the wisdom of Solomon. God is working mightily in the lives of his people. And the significance of this particular moment is that we are seeing a man who is set up for great success by the grace and mercy of God. Israel is enjoying a a situation. Israel is enjoying a, a circumstance that God had provided for her through David. David was the man of war. David had uh, expanded the kingdom of Israel to the extent, to its greatest extent in history. It would never be the size it is during Solomon's reign, which he inherited from his father, David. Solomon was a man of peace. God had set Israel up, established them in the land, given them peace from their neighbors. And now as he is preparing us at the end of chapter 4 for the beginning of chapter 5, making provisions for the building of the temple, God has said, I'm placing you in safety. You don't have to worry about defending yourselves from the other nations. I'm placing you in a place of provision. You don't have to worry about how you're going to feed your family or how you're going to feed your land. I'm doing this for you so that then you can focus your attention on building the temple for me. 
And not only did you have peace with all the land and peace with all the nations that are going to allow you to build your temple, they're also going to support the building of your temple, and they're going to give you the supplies you need in order to build the temple. This is a wonderful story of the grace of God, of the provision of God. We pray in the the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. And we hear a a reference in this passage to Solomon's daily provision that God had lavished blessing upon blessing upon blessing on him and the people of God. And God does that in our lives. He blesses us richly in order to enable us to focus our attention on worshiping him. Jesus says, and we've talked about this already in this study, but Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these other things will be added unto you. Right. So we're seeking the kingdom of God. God is providing for us. We're enjoying it. But that provision from God is to be used for the advancement of his kingdom. What happens for God's people, and we'll get to this as we read it in 1 Kings, what happens for God's people is they begin to take advantage uh, of God's grace and provision. They don't use it for his glory. They don't use it for his worship. They begin to, to, to quote, get fat and lazy and and. and fail to pursue him in his majesty and his glory. And as a result of that, they have to deal with the consequences. God often brings provision in our lives, but the purpose of that provision is to enable us to focus our attention on the glory of God, the, to, to pursue him and his righteousness, and to testify to his goodness. And uh, so God has set his people up uniquely here, for the purpose of building the temple and establishing the cult worship within the city of Jerusalem. He used David to prepare them. Now Solomon is there with his wisdom, and every nation around has recognized that from a human standpoint, and they are paying homage to Solomon. They're coming to hear from Solomon because they need the wisdom of Solomon. They respect Solomon, and as a result of that, they are providing uh, resources that Solomon will use to advance and to build his kingdom and to make the people of God wealthy. It, the the goal for us as as the people of God is is not right to to get wealthy. The goal for us is to be a reflection of the glory of God and to be respected by the community so that people will come and know who Jesus is and have the opportunity to encounter him through our lives and through the testimony of his church. That's where I'll end today. You guys have a great day. God bless you. I'll see you next time. This is Chester ARP Church Devotional Podcast. Share it. We read the Bible. We discuss it. See you soon. You carry me close to your heart